If you're not familiar with yeast doughs and you really want to get involved in them, this is a very good recipe for the beginner as well as the advanced person because it's just a wonderful dough to work with. So we're going to have some very simple ingredients. It goes together very simply. We have a third of a cup of sugar, two thirds of a cup of warm milk between 100 and 104 degrees. I have a half a teaspoon of salt, three eggs, got a half a cup of shortening, which I melted. I have some yeast. I'm going to use one tablespoon. And in this bowl, I have three and a half cups of flour. So the first thing I want to do is put the sugar in my mixing bowl. Now I buy my yeast in bulk and I like to store it in these uh, canning jars with a nice screw on lid in the refrigerator. It's just so much easier to use. So there's my one tablespoon of yeast. And then to that I'm going to add the milk. All in my mixer bowl. Then I've got a little whisk here. Just kind of whisk it around to get it blended. Now normally when you're working with yeast at this point you would be proofing the yeast. That means you'd be leaving it there for 5, 10, 15 minutes to make sure that the yeast is alive. And I recommend that you do that in this recipe. I'm not going to stop and do that step because I know the yeast is good because I've used it earlier today from the same jar. I'm going to put my paddle attachment on. And now I'm going to add one cup of the flour. Remember, I have three and a half cups. At this point, I'm only adding one. And now I'm going to mix this up to blend. All right, that's good enough. Here's my melted shortening. Now, I melted it in the microwave and I let it come back to uh, a little bit cooler than when it came out of the oven because if I put a very warm liquid in here, the yeast would die. So this is very warm, but it's not too warm. Add all of that at once. My half a teaspoon of salt. And now my eggs. I'm still using the paddle attachment. And I'm going to change that real soon. And we're going to move over to our dough hook. So far it's easy, right? Okay. Take that away. Just going to scrape the sides down, make sure everything's getting in that bowl. Okay. Now at this point, Another real easy step, just going to dump the rest of the flour in. You're not going to get too many other yeast dough recipes that are this easy. Now with the dough hook on, I am going to let this run for about three or four minutes until all of the dough comes together. The dough has come together and I'm just going to leave this running for about two minutes and just let it knead it a lot more, get it smoother. All right, that's pretty good. Now this dough is still sticky, but it's not so sticky it'll stick all over my hands. So I'm gonna get a bowl, spray it with some cooking spray. dough off of the hook. It's sticking, but it's not sticky. I, you'll know it when you, when you touch the dough. You'll, you'll know what I mean. That I can touch it with my hands. It's sticky, but it's not sticking to my hands. Now, take it all out and put it into this grease bowl. Get it all in there. Now I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap and I'm going to leave it at room temperature for 45 minutes to an hour to let it double in bulk. And then we'll start making our coffee cake. 
All right, before we start rolling out our dough, I'm going to make the filling that's going to go into this coffee cake. And there are many types of fillings that you can use, but this is like a cinnamon bun filling. So I have a cup of sugar, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and then I have a cup of finely chopped pecans. You can use walnuts in this or hazelnuts or you know whatever nut you happen to choose. This coffee cake is like a big rage online right now among bakers. It's called a starburst. And uh, yesterday I think I saw 15 different posts online with all different variations of fillings. There was this filling, there was someone that filled it with Nutella, which you can do. There was someone that filled it with um, pesto. Someone filled it with sun-dried tomatoes and cheese. So there's a lot of directions that you can go with this recipe. Okay, that's good enough for now. I'm gonna put that aside. And now, I happen to have one that I made previously. It's been sitting at room temperature for about two hours. Looking at the clock and I've got some flour here. And over on the side, I'm gonna flour my board, get some flour on my hands. So I'm just going to take my dough out and put it off to the side here because we don't need this right at this moment. And I'm going to oh, I'll put a little bit more over here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to divide this into four pieces. And I'm going to put these aside. I'm going to work with one at a time. flour on my board. And now what I have off to the side is I have a piece of parchment paper that fits my baking sheet, my cookie sheet. Um, you can use Silpat if you have it, or if you want to, you can um, just lightly grease your sheet and put it directly on the sheet. I like the parchment paper. paper. It works out really nice. Now, what I'm going to use is a bowl as a guide to the size that I want. I want this to be when it's done, I want this to be approximately a 10 inch round um, coffee cake. But I'm going to roll it a little bit more than that and you'll see why later. So just rolling it out and we're going to do this to all four pieces. Now, let me see if that's big enough. Is my 10 inch bowl and yes it's big enough. So I'm going to take my parchment paper and I'm going to put this round as best I can centered on the parchment paper. Okay now back to that filling. I'm going to take approximately one-third of the filling and put it on the dough. And not to the edges, but about within an inch of the edge. Okay, put it aside. And now we're going to work with the next piece. And we're going to keep layering this so we have three layers of the cinnamon and then a top layer to cover. So it's the way I like to do is roll it up on the pin, bring this back over, and now lay it down. And see how easy this dough is to work with. It doesn't tear on you, it's not that delicate. And what you want to do is just get it over the first one. Kind of press it down now so that the sugar and the cinnamon and the nuts get stuck into the dough and you won't lose as much filling later. Again. 
another layer. Okay. Put it off to the side. One more time. Well, actually two more times, but one more time with filling. And then we're going to do the top and final layer. one that comes out like a modern piece of art. It's come crazy shapes. Yeah. Close enough. And just stretch it to fit. Pressing down. Okay. Now, I'm going to take our bowl again, put it in there, press down, trim it. Unfortunately, I can't do anything with that piece. Okay, there we go. We have our nice round. Now the fun begins. You get either a cookie cutter or some other, you can use a glass from your cabinet about four or five inches across and center it right in the middle. Don't press it down too hard, just leave it there. Now we're going to take a sharp knife and we're gonna cut this in quarters. And now every quarter we're going to cut in half. And now each of those we're going to cut in half. this now. There's the center of our star or our flower, whichever you want to call it. I call it a star burst. It can be a flower burst. Now we lift one of these up and twist to the left twice and put it down. Pick up the one next to it, twist to the right and put it down. Then you get these two ends, put them together and just squish and kind of tuck them under and elongate it a little bit. Again, twist to the left. I didn't cut all the way through. Okay, twist to the left, twist to the right. Squish them together and underneath. Now, if you really get good at this, you can do two at a time. I haven't quite gotten that to that point yet. This is only like my third time making this, I think. Okay. You can see how pretty it looks already? Here's the last two. Okay. 
there is our coffee cake. Now what I'm going to do is get a sheet pick it up, put it on the cookie sheet get myself a clean towel or if you have a, a big enough you could do this too I suppose and use it as a proofing box but I don't want to ruin the edges so you just want a, a tea towel that doesn't have fuzz on it, you know. Cover it, leave it at room temperature for about two hours, and then we'll bake it off. Here's our Starburst coffee cake. It's been sitting at room temperature for about two hours. It's puffed up nicely. My oven is on at 350 degrees, and this should bake for 25 to 30 minutes. I'm going to start checking it at 20, and you should also because every oven is different. Here's our Starburst coffee cake, fresh out of the oven. The braid held together beautifully. I don't know if this is a Starburst or if it looks like a sunflower to me because you've got this disc in the middle and all these petals coming out and then these petals on the side, but you can call it whatever you want to call it. I'm going to let this cool down completely and then I'm going to do a little decorating on top of it and gild the lily. So I'll be back as soon as this cools down. I'm going to make a frosting for the top of the Starburst coffee cake. And in my little pan here, I have four tablespoons of butter melting. And you can hear it sizzling away. And if you look at the top of it, you can see a lot of bubbles. What I'm making is a browned butter frosting or glaze. And in order for it to become browned butter, I have to wait until all of those noises stop, the bubbles go away, and then shortly thereafter, you'll start to see the butter will start turning brown and nutty. And when it does that, you want to remove it quickly. I have just over a cup of confectioner's sugar. I have some milk. I have some vanilla and uh, some pecans for decorating. And I'm looking and I'm just starting to see tan tinges in the pan. Almost there. Still got too many bubbles. A little bit more. You can smell the nuttiness of the butter. Okay, there we go. I'm going to pour all of that butter into the confectioner's sugar. Get a little whisk and give it a ride. I want to put in some homemade vanilla. I'm going to put in two teaspoons because I really like that flavor. And I'm going to start off with one and a half tablespoons of milk. I might need more. Depends. Well, that looks about where I'm going to leave it. Just give it a good whisk to get rid of any pockets of confectioner sugar that didn't get blended in very well. And there you go. Get these things out of the way. And what I did is I have a glass here with a Ziploc bag in it and I just put the corner down. I'm going to put my glaze in there. Bring over our lovely coffee cake. You can see there's the corner and I got it all in there. It's great because there's, <laughs> there's no cleanup after this either. So, cut off an end. I'm gonna put some in the middle first. And you don't have to use this icing. You can use a plain vanilla icing if you want to. You don't have to put any icing on it if you don't want to at all. And I'm just going to put some whole pecans as a decoration. Push that one over. I can fit another one in there. And don't forget, in the, in the center, we have a lot of very finely chopped pecans. So we're just following through on that flavor. And then I'm just going to go here and there, give it a little bit of glaze. I don't want to cover up 
any of that beautiful filling that's sticking out. No, I don't want to get in there. That's too pretty. But I like this browned flavor of the butter. It's just really delicious. And if you wanted to, you could also have some more finely chopped pecans and spread them over. But I think we've got enough pecans on there. And I think I'll put a little bit on each starburst. There you go. You have a really, really beautiful coffee cake. Your company would just be amazed at what you've made.